last year, I did a filming location tour for a movie called Finnegan Begin Again, and I started the video right here. Now, this was the location of the house used in the movie. You can see this brick or stone wall here. That was still was there in the movie. It's still here, remains, but the house is gone. And so I took you over here, showed you where the house used to be. There's a squirrel up here. Obviously a big fan of Robert Preston and Mary Tyler Moore. So the movie was filmed where most of it, a lot of it, a lot of famous important scenes, including the ending, took place in a house that stood right up at the top of these stairs. You would see these stairs in the movie. Robert Preston lived in this house with his wife. His wife passes away. Mary Tyler Moore and him work to sell the house. And in the movie, they're talking about how developers want to develop something on this land, which obviously hasn't happened. You can see there's a sinkhole over there. But the house used to be right here. You can see some of the foundation here. Now, I had read that this house was relocated, but then I read that it was demolished and then relocated, which I've never heard of. I've heard of houses being picked up and moved, but I've never heard of a house being destroyed and then rebuilt. But apparently this is what happened. There was a doctor that liked this house so much that he took the broken pieces of the house and had it rebuilt on the other side of town. So I dug and dug until I found where the house is. So we are on our way to see the hay house that used to stand right here. So here it is, one of the most historic homes in Richmond, Virginia. You can see the beautiful stained glass window there. In the movie, Robert Preston would go up to the porch. The house was up a little bit on a hill. And that's where he got robbed by Giancarlo Esposito. Come on. I gave last month. Then there was the big ending with him and Mary Tyler Moore right in the living room area after they had moved out all the furniture. They had a shoot on the side to shoot out all of his belongings. Thankfully, this house still exists and it's now here on the other side of town. It's got a new paint job, but it looks beautiful. It's great to see it's still standing. This is where Mary Tyler Moore's apartment would have been. Actually, I think it would have been this window. It's hard to tell, but you see her in the film standing by some bowed windows looking out. We also many times see the front of her apartment, which we're gonna walk around there to take a look. This is where she lived. Uh, they showed her in there. Robert Preston went there to have dinner with her and then uh, he was so wet he ended up in her robe. Uh, Sam Watterson has a very ridiculous scene that takes place in the street in front of it. I'll show you exactly where that happened. Let's take a look. So Robert Preston agrees to meet with her. He's got her address written down and he walks along here looking for her address which is this red brick building here. And when he gets close, he gets to right about here and he stops, looks at his paper right here, then walks up the stairs over here and rings for Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah? Finnegan here. If you haven't seen the film in years, the plot is that Mary Tyler Moore is a single woman who is having an affair with Sam Waterston, who's married and is a mortician by trade. And she meets up with Robert Preston, who's a sort of like a gossip columnist. He does like a Dear Abby type newspaper article where he pretends to be female and answers people's questions. And so she meets up with him He's kind of towards the end of his career, kind of in a bad place in his marriage, and they become friends uh, reluctantly at first, uh, but he's such an outgoing, upbeat person. He really wants to know more about her and definitely seems smitten with her. So Sam Waterston shows up at one point when they're having dinner and he's wearing her robes. Robert Preston is wearing Mary Tyler Moore's robe. And Sam Waterston's confused and kind of upset about it. So he goes back out to where his hearse was, which would have been right in front of the house here. 
So he's parked about here and he pulls the hearse up here, but he had left the back door open. So the coffin slides out of the back of the hearse and lands on the street right about here. So the coffin came out, was right on the street here, and a guy's walking down the street and he's like, hey, give me a little help. And the guy <laughs> helps him put the coffin back into the, into the car. Well, yeah, that coffin would have been right here on the street. It's kind of the silliest scene in the movie. The movie is comedic, but uh, that is the most slapsticky scene. I'm pretty sure they filmed inside this building because if you look in there, right in between these two buildings, you can see a window and it's got a curved top on it. And in the movie, there's a shot of Robert Preston going up the stairs. And that looks exactly like that would have been that window. So they would have filmed that right inside this building. On Broad Street for the next location, look at this Coca-Cola sign at the very top of this barber shop. There's one on the side as well. Look at that, that is beautiful. It's got all little lights inside of it. This is uh, Broad Street here in Richmond. I was walking by and they had a sign here that said that Lincoln was here. And this refers to the Steven Spielberg movie. So I went inside and I spoke to the woman there. She said that when they filmed that movie, they shot a scene in there. It was not the scene in Ford's theater, but they did shoot a scene here, she said, for one day, they took out all the seats, replaced them with other old seats. She said this theater was built in 1910, so it's historically much newer than it was playing in the movie, but they were able to kind of fake it for a day. It's been 10 minutes. Wow. It's never been closed since. It's and what? a vaudeville house when it first opened. Get out. Does it have like an ornate ceiling? Um, uh, just but all the way up to the ceiling. No, yeah, it doesn't have like, ornate. wow, that is really beautiful. And what's the play you guys are doing? We're doing a, a play called Satchmo at the Waldorf. Oh, okay, all right. It's about Louis Armstrong. Wow. And the yeah, show wow. takes place, that's his dressing you know, that room. Or... his dressing room, yeah. Wow, that is something. So here is the Quirk Hotel, and in Finnegan Begin Again, this is where Mary Tyler Moore waited in front of a karate studio, waiting for the bus. Now what this means is that the hotel that she would go to with Sam Waterston has to be right around here somewhere because she was walking from it. Now I assume they probably did shoot that in a place here. This movie seemed to utilize real locations a lot uh, exclusively. There's no, there's no footage that was shot on a soundstage that I know of in the film. So she probably, you know, was in this building or one nearby. They didn't show her actually exit. They showed her in the building, then they showed her out here waiting for the bus. Multiple times we see her, because this is the first stop where she gets on the bus and meets Robert Preston. Hello, you sweet thing. My, you look lovely today. <sighs> now, Mary Tyler Moore was standing on the grate. She's right here. You can see this in the background. And then over here, you can see this column. And today this place is called the Quirk Hotel. But at that time, they were doing karate here. And she waited out here for the bus. So here's the view of the street. And when you see the bus pull up, you can see, look for this tall building with the six skinny windows. You can see that right there. It's kind of the tall one right in the middle of the frame. And so, this was the shot. So I went inside and I took a look around. I'm going to put that footage in here. You can see it's got some nice cathedral ceilings. Kind of very unusual place to have a karate studio. Got myself a coffee. It's sitting over here because it's so hot. I was burning my fingers through the plastic. We've got this head sticking out of the building here. Kind of reminds me of Robert Patrick in The Terminator big giant head. Big thanks to the RVA, Richmond, Virginia page or thread or community on Reddit. I uh, went on there and asked and I got the names here. It was Pecans for All and John Twitt were the two people that clued me into this location as well as Mary Tyler Moore's apartment location. Uh, those were the two I couldn't find before. Uh, if you haven't seen the other video, 
was a lot of fun. We went to the cemetery. I found the spot where the grave was dug out for Robert Preston's wife. And then, if you've seen the movie, Sam Waterston and Mary Tyler Moore fell into the grave. And I found exactly where that grave was. Also went to a bunch of other locations. There's a couple restaurants shown in the movie. I went to both of those. It's a lot of fun. I'm gonna watch it again. I'm in the mood for it. I'm gonna watch that movie again. Last time I looked, the whole movie was on YouTube. Actually, when I did the video last time, I had watched the movie in its entirety for the first time the night before. Uh, and it's a sweet movie. Has not been released, to my knowledge, on home video ever. Not in VHS, DVD, and I don't think it's available streaming other than YouTube, which, which sort of counts, but it's not officially on there. But I believe there was like two different copies on there. So you can check it out. I'm gonna put that video of me looking at the locations last time right up over on this side. And otherwise, YouTube says this. What is best for you? I'll see you next time.